What is going on fellow rider? My name is Cody from Motorcycle MD. Welcome. In this video, I'll be showing you guys step by step how to change the coolant on this gorgeous 2016 GL 1800. Now specifically, 2012-2017, Honda made some changes on the GL 1800. So if you have one that predates that, it's going to be a little bit different setup. Pretty much same location of the radiator cap, draining it, but getting to it is what makes all the difference. The newer ones are actually a little bit more pickier, a little bit more technique when it comes to removing certain parts, but don't worry, I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Now believe it or not, shop I work at, we are very well known for our gold wing work. I am a professional Honda technician, and I do this all the freaking time. But there are a couple of key points that I want to make. Obviously, just like your car, don't do this when the bike is hot. Again, do not remove the radiator cap while the bike is hot. It's not like your oil where you want to circulate things around, get nice and warm, and maybe you can withstand the burn when you undo that oil drain plug. Coolant's a little bit different. It does not matter of you mixing everything around, going on a long ride, or whatever. We're going to get it out regardless in a number of different ways, but you need to do it cold. Okay, the pressure that's built up in the system can spray out all over you, and you turn a great time working on your bike into a very poor time explaining your wife why you need to go to the ER. One other key point that I want to make is that Honda uses a specific type of coolant. Okay, ethylene glycol-based coolant. It is not a silicate-based coolant. That is very, very important. All Hondas use that type of coolant. Ethylene glycol-based coolant. All right. Honda, of course, has their 50-50 blend. Super easy to use. One helpful tip I want to give you is that about four years ago, Honda changed their coolant style. They had a green coolant at first. They swapped it over into a blue coolant. So if your coolant is green, it's old. Okay. Honda changed everything to a new blue style. All the new bikes come with it that are liquid cooled. And that is a super important bit of information when it comes to the age of your coolant. Okay. So don't do it when it's hot. Ethylene glycol based lubricant. And just be careful. Okay. I'm going to go step by step with you guys. Let's dive right in. No more wasting your time. So, welcome to the POV, camera angle, hands-on, you know what I'm saying? So, this is the coolant that I'll be using right here. Honda's HP Coolant, Type 2, ready to use, 50-50 blend, blue coolant. That stuff may be expensive to you, $7.99 a quart, whatever it is from your part of the town. That's just what I use every single time. I'm never going to put Prestone, I'm never going to put anything else except from the Honda HP coolant. So if you want to use something else that's ethylene, glycol based, by all means. I haven't seen any damage come from any of that kind of stuff, but I'm going to recommend that all day long because that's what it was made to do. So the newer model 1800s are a little bit different, okay, mainly because of this strip here that it's kind of holding and fastened in. It's a pain in the butt to get off, as well as this pocket here. It's no longer really a pocket. Before 2012, they had a nice little, maybe a key lock entry, and then you can pop it up, push the four tabs. There's two screws, two tabs. You can undo that, and there's a little latch system for the key entry. But on the new models, it no longer does that because it pops this lid here, okay? So what we need to do is get to the side first to get to the Allen screws that are here to pull this pocket up, disconnect the connectors, and get to the radiator cap. On all the gold wings, 1800s, their radiator cap is always right in here. Okay, I'll get to the drain portion later. Let's go after this. But before I get started, this video is sponsored by Gloveworks HD Nitro Gloves. They are honestly a game changer when it comes to disposable gloves. They have this awesome grip on them that when they get lubricated, whether you're cutting meat, cleaning, doing oil changes, coolant, keep the stuff off your hands, obviously. My wife loves it. 
and it's just a great great product to be honest with you i love them they are a fantastic company and if you subscribe to my mailing list you will get discount codes on your set they got green yellow orange and black my favorite ones okay i'm gonna try to get the best shot possible for you guys but we'll see how it goes now the tools you need to get the job done are actually fairly fairly simple it takes a five millimeter allen i use a little gun for it phillips head screwdriver a funnel to refill and i would recommend getting at least four quarts of that hp coolant okay it takes a little bit under that but four quarts it is enough when you're you know getting everything at, out of the holding bottle as well as filling up the entire system. Some is good, more is better. So let's say you bought the Gold Wing, they already have air wings on them, no problem. They're held in by two main screws, okay, which are covered by chrome caps. Getting underneath them, I just use a small little pocket knife. I just wanna get right up underneath it just to pry that cap off, okay? I'm not damaging anything. Very, very carefully, slide a nice blade up underneath there and gently just pry it off. Okay, so you have your Phillips head screws here and here. Behind here are two nylon spacers that help keep it off of this plastic piece. There's one. Hold, the, hold this while you're going. And there should be a spacer left in there. Hold the whole wing. Take it all off as one piece. Okay, I, I, I like to leave that part still on there. Here are our two spacers, spacer one, spacer two, same exact length. Now, getting this piece off this little L here can be quite a pain, especially if it's never come off. From the factory, man, I'll tell you what, they are very aggravating because they are just snapped in perfectly. Really, they have two or three little white clips right behind here, and simply by getting your fingernails up underneath this corner here, this is usually where I start right here, I can simply just pull up kind of work my way across until it pops off, okay? It might take a little bit of force if it's never been done, okay? But it has to be come off straight at you this way. Once that's popped up, you can work this way off and it's fairly simple. If you're having trouble getting your fingers and nails up underneath there, a plastic butter knife works great or a plastic scraper. Just try to be careful. Of, obviously, you have a painted surface right there, okay? I'm just gonna go right in the, uh, underneath this corner, work my way across, applying pressure as I go across towards me until it pops up. And to get this off, or on your older style of GL1800, same way, you're gonna rock this left to right as you work this off. Left to right, you hear it pop out of its little corners. It's got these little edges. All the way around so just going from left to right pops that right off oh look there's just two okay here are our allen bolts here we can go ahead and pop this cover up i'm gonna lift the windshield latch here pull this up and out okay and your connector for this is actually located right back in here it's held in by a little wire clasp this little rubber clasp here I'm gonna pull this out, pull the sleeve back on it, and there's your switch. How this switch comes off is actually awesome. Okay, very different from the older stuff. Okay, looking at the switch like this, it has a little ramp right on this side. I'm gonna put my fingernail up underneath that and rock this whole gray piece backwards. And it will literally undo the connector for you. How amazing is that? Put that off in a clean area. Oh, what do you know? Radiator cap. Now that we know where the radiator cap is, this is where we will be filling at. I'm gonna leave this cap on. Don't undo this cap yet, okay? So the next step is to get this lower cowl off. And it's kind of a pain in the butt, not gonna lie. Especially when you have aftermarket fog lights there, it's even funner to take off because you have to clear a bunch of different room and bend things out of the way that you feel like you may be harming, but you're not, okay? You gotta bend, pull, push, pry, and eventually work its way out. Let's try to do it so I can get a good shot for you guys. Now, the first place you're gonna wanna get to are these two black clips here, okay? They're little pop snaps. You can just use your fingernails, pop, pop, 
leave them in there. You don't, you don't need to take them all the way out. If you need to, you can pair needle nose pliers, get underneath there and pop them out. Just a simple click is all they take. Then you have these Allen screws to get to, okay? Now they are different sizes, so pay attention. Allen screw here, Allen screw there, and an Allen screw right there. This one and this one, I believe, are the same size. This one is a little bit deeper to get through three pieces of plastic. Same on the other side, three bolts, let's get them undone. One, two, exact same size. Three, different size. Same on the other side. Now that that is undone, what we can do is pry up on this top piece here and pull it forward. See how I just propped it forward? Now all of this is loose, okay? And what we're gonna need to do, oh look, a leaf. Okay, so this is kind of a hard shot to get, but if you look up there, you will see that it's tucked up right behind this sleeve here. So if I pull this to the left, this angle right here, I can slip this down and around that piece, just like that, okay? Kind of use some force, but I just pulled this whole side cover, bottom portion, out, and I kind of pushed this bottom piece towards the right and out in front of it. Now I have way, way more room to play. The other side will be a lot easier now that this is unclasped. Once that's undone, on the other side, you can just pull this forward a little bit and this whole piece should drop down and you can simply just pull it away. There it is. All right, now looking at the underbelly of the whole system, you got your EVAP canister, you got your horn here, there's your oil filter. What you need to get to is a little spigot that is just barely visible and it's located right there. Little downspout right in front of the oil filter. Same on all of the 1800s. Eight millimeter socket will get it undone. Get a nice little extension, eight millimeter socket, and get ready to loosen up. But of course you need a catch pan. So, catch pan in place. The reason why I did not undo that top radiator cap yet because I still wanted to maintain that vacuum that it has on the system. So when I go to loosen this up, it's not just gonna come pouring out like the Niagara Falls. It's going to wait until I undo the top cap. Lefty Lucy, this bolt is going to have a ceiling washer on it. A brass ceiling washer. As you can see here, there it is. You're going to want to replace that. See how it's just crushed from that one time use? That's what they're designed to do. They are designed to seal. Now, this bike has blue coolant. Customer wants everything flushed out every certain amount of years because he doesn't ride it too often, which is totally okay. As you can see, only a little bit came out. So reaching back up into the body where the radiator cap is, I'm gonna crack it loose. Undo the suction by pulling the cap off and releasing the Kraken. There's your radiator cap. What I like to do is just clean this up. There is no like mileage interval on when these should be replaced. Just pay attention to any corrosion buildup on top of the the gasket set or anything like that on here. If you see any corrosion, just replace it. Otherwise, I keep it nice and clean with a quick rag touch up. And that's going to drain until it's done. So while that's draining, you have some options. You can just drain it out, refill, call it good. This is blue coolant, it's relatively new. It really does not have too many miles on it at all. I may not necessarily flush out every single system unless, like I said earlier, unless the bike's been sitting for a long period of time, you have no information about how well the bike was taken care of. But if the coolant looks relatively new, low miles, just replacing it is fine. It will not do any damage. Or if you want to go to the extreme route, you can flush it out by using either a couple of gallons of distilled water, filling the system up completely once it's drained, obviously, and running it to operating temperature. Once you run into operating temperature, the thermostat allows it to open, flush through the cylinders, get all of that mess out, and you can drain it. Of course, once the bike has cooled down. 
putting it through that heat cycle, it will take an hour or two for it to really cool down to where you can actually put your hands on it and drain the coolant out. You can do that as many times as you want until it's clean. Once or twice is usually good enough. Or if you want for it, for a little bit different type of cleaner, you can use a 50-50 solution of distilled water and white vinegar. Okay, 50-50 solution, a little bit of that acidity will help clean out any deposits left in the hoses, around the water pump, vice versa. Again, operating temperature, wait for it to cool down, then drain. For this one, I'm just going to be simply replacing it. But there's one other step that I will do, because that's just what I do every time, is I'll actually be using a mighty vac system that you, that you usually use to do brake systems to put it up against that hole and suck out any remaining coolant. What it will also do is suck out the coolant from the holding bottle. Now, the holding bottle on the GL1800 is located up underneath the belly, okay? The coolant out of this holding bottle is to, of course, access it. Left side cover, pry this up towards you. Right here at the bottom, work your way around, pull the back up or front against you, and pull this edge towards you again. That will come off. And here is actually where you would check your coolant level. Rubber cap has a dipstick on it. Okay, that one was full. Take that. Bad dipstick, bad. Once it's dry, you can put it back in and test it when you're getting ready to fill it all up and stuff like that. So what you can do is take a turkey baster with a skinny little hose, put it down inside of the hole, make sure you, that you won't lose your hose to so make it relatively long, about a foot will do, and turkey baste and suck all of that coolant out and dispose of it properly, okay? And do that over and over until it's drained, okay? I promise you, laying on your back and trying to get underneath there to get the hose to undo it, you're gonna spill coolant all over yourself, and it's just a real pain in the butt, okay? Turkey baster with a long hose works great. If you wanna get it all the way out of the cooling bottle, if the coolant's relatively new, is it necessary? Hmm, that's for you to decide. If it's been sitting for a long time, possibly green coolant, I'd suck it out so you have all fresh stuff. But when I use the Mighty Vac system, I keep this closed. And once I apply my Mighty Vac with the compressed air, I hold it up to that hole that we just took the bolt out of, and it will usually suck out about two more cups of coolant. It's not too much of a crazy difference. Honestly, you can do without. It's not a necessary thing to do. It's just what I do, okay? Put a brand new washer on it. Part number is... They don't take a lot of pressure. It's very, very soft metal. Okay, so once it seats, I'm gonna give it a small little quarter turn. Okay, that's all I'm doing. It's a small little quarter turn. The ceiling washer does an amazing job. It will seal it up. Don't go crazy on it and just snap the bolt off or, trip the, or strip the threads out. Wait for it to seat, little quarter turn. That's all you need. Then you will proceed to filling. All right, so when it comes to filling, it's just like you think it would be. You fill it up. And typically what I do is I'll put a little rag around here because there's bound to be some kind of spillage that goes over. And this just keeps, you know, in case you happen to overfill it by accident or something lack thereof. I can use a, a small funnel like this. This is really just so I can bring it up and watch it. Depending on how it wants to flow, um, it may take a little bit to just start to, for it not to overfill up here at the neck. Sometimes it flows really, really easily. And it um, just depends on how fast you pour and this, that, and the other. So, so like, like right there, it, it's already backing up a little bit but it's no problem, just feed it in nice and slow. I usually go around two bottles first. Then, once it starts to show that, or act like it's full up top of here, after you've been pouring it for probably about 10 minutes, um, we're gonna go through multiple on-off sequences with the bike. We're gonna start the bike up, let it idle, give it a couple quick snaps of the throttle. That will bring air bubbles to the top of the system and shut the bike back off. And then, if you want to do, is you can is just leave the cover off, put a radiator cap back on, go for a quick spin around the block, bring it back in, let it cool down, and then take the radiator cap back off and see how much it has dropped. Because it's bound to have dropped a little bit. There's always some trapped air bubbles somewhere. And that's really the best way to get them all out. And there we go. See how full that is? That's with the third bottle. It actually went 
a lot went in at, at first. So what I'll do is you can see it's like, I mean, it's right on the cusp. I got really close with that. Fire it up. Let's watch the air bubbles come to the top. Shut it back down. This thing actually filled up pretty nicely. Let's do it one more time. Well, that's a good idea to have that rag there. Shut it back off. If it's staying full like that because the bike received the amount of coolant you gave it so well, no, not a lot of trapped air bubbles per se, clean paper towel and just soak up what's on top, kind of gently pressing down not to overflow it, okay? Drop it down right to that lower line right down there. Use your paper towel, soak up any coolant that might have gotten past the rag. That rag actually did a great job absorbing it. Reinstall your radiator cap. I like to keep it so the numbers when I turn it and lock it in, that I can read everything. So, because I can install it like this, but when I tighten it down, it'll read backwards. So, that's just a good rule of thumb that I like to do. Lock it down, see how you can read everything's legible. Just like that, start the bike, go for a quick run, run it, go for a quick ride. You can leave this cover off, you can even leave that bottom cowl off, it's no big deal. Um, take, take, take it around the block, get it warmed up to operating temperature shut it back off, let it cool down completely, and then recheck. One other thing you can do, obviously drain the rear reservoir, add new coolant to that. So there's two bars, you can get it right in between there. And that's really it, man. It's not too, too intensive. Um, when you're going back in with this front cowl, lower cowl, work in one side first, get it up underneath that lip like we pulled it out, and then you can work that other side in as well. Okay, so slide one side in. Don't try to get them both in at the same time. You're gonna learn a whole other set of customers trying to do that. So just slide it in to the right first or to the left, whatever side you want, and then kind of pull the fairing back and slide it up underneath that cusp, all right? So you're pulling the fairing back to get it up underneath. Does that make sense? Okay, so work with one side, then the other. But everything else is just the reverse order of how you took it apart. Very, very simple. Remember that the short screws go into two bottom and the long screw goes in that one top that's going through all those plastics, okay? So get all that lined up, and that's it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and checking out this video. Hopefully it shines some light when it comes to you working on your gold wing, small maintenance stuff like changing the coolant out. Very important. I would do it at least once a year or every 16 to 24,000 miles. So while you're here, you might as well subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you do not already know, the Motorcycle MD Inner Circle membership is now fully functional on the website at MotorcycleMD.com. This is where much more learning takes place, topical videos, all different types of carb clean videos, as well as the community based around DIY motorcycle repairs. We have our own private Facebook group, which is where we spend most of our time talking and discussing motorcycle issues until our faces turn blue. I hope to see you guys there. Again, if you want to check that out, there will be a link below to get more information about that membership. But until then, ride safe, everybody. I'll see you guys next time. Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. See you guys around.